The marketing plan. A well-written, comprehensive marketing plan is a focal point of all business ventures because it describes how you plan to attract and retain customers. Crafting a strategic marketing plan for your company helps you set and achieve realistic business goals while enabling your team to adapt to changes in the market and enjoy the benefits of their hard work. Agile marketing helps CMOs and marketing directors prioritize growth and evolve as the business climate changes. Welcome to week four. This week, we will be covering the marketing strategy, which entails segmentation, the marketing mix, budget, and the timeline. So many plans, but one main focus. There are many templates available. Most are good, and it really doesn't matter which one you use. It just matters that you formulate a plan and stick to it. Don't get overwhelmed with this slide. This is an infographic style representation of marketing plan elements. These are the key elements within the business plan that drive a marketing plan. Take a moment to become familiar with this template that shows the pieces of the puzzle that you'll need to build a successful marketing plan. The executive summary. Your executive summary features key elements of the marketing plan. So write it after you finish the plan. In short, it's an orientation tool. In essence, it's a brief business overview. The summary gives you highlights of the following. The current market environment. That's the size of the universe, of your universe. An extent to which the industry is regulated by governments. In this section, we talk about the company background, product service focus, the time period covered, the revenue goal, and the key marketing objectives. In wrapping up the executive summary, also include target market objectives. This section of the plan communicates the specific measurements that define success. Also the market strategy. State the logic by which you intend to create and achieve customer value. It's the answer to two questions. Which customers will you serve? How will you create value for them? What are the action plans? How you turn market strategies into specific programs and initiatives is the focus here. Answer such questions as what will be done, when will it be done, and who will do it. The budget. Provide financial clarity about expected cost, revenue, and return on investment. Metrics. Specify how will you measure progress towards your goals and objectives. Market opportunities. The five types of adopters for new products and innovations. In the marketing opportunities section, you'll look at the, your audience and determine where they are in the adopting cycle so you meet their needs and position your product accordingly. As a side note, there are five types of adopters for new products and innovations. Innovators. They're first to try a new product. They're risk takers. The products they're interested in tend to be more expensive at their point of release and innovators are generally wealthier. Early adopters. These tend to be the most influential people within any market space, and they often have a degree of thought leadership for other potential adopters. They may be very active in social media and often create reviews and other materials around new products that they strongly dislike or like. Early adopters will normally have a reasonably high social status, which enables thought leadership reasonable access to finances, high levels of education, and a reasonable approach to risk. However, they do not take as many risks as innovators and tend to make a more reasonable decision. Early majority. As a product begins to have mass market appeal, the next class of adopter to arrive is the early majority. This class of adopter 
is reasonably risk adverse and wants to be sure that their often more limited resources are spent wisely on products. Late majority. The late majority is rather more skeptical. Less money, lower social status, and less interaction with thought leaders. The laggers. Laggers are the last to arrive at the adoption party, and their arrival is typically a sign that the product is entering decline. Laggers value traditional methods of doing things and highly adverse to change and risk. Typically, laggers will have low socioeconomic status. There are older people who are less familiar with technology than younger generations, and in these cases, they may still have a mid-level of social economic status. There will be high income, well-educated, risk-taking laggers as well as low income, poorly educated, non-thought leader, early adopters, not to confuse you. There are also plenty of older people familiar with technology. These categories are useful for generic planning for market entry and should not be used to stereotype individuals. The key takeaway here is understanding these fit into the product life cycle can enable selective marketing and design activities which are focused on tapping into these adopter specific needs. This can improve a product's chances of success. Marketing strategies. The marketing strategy section of the plan considers the marketing mix of the four P's. Product service portfolio, the promotions, pricing, and the place. Target audiences. Developing an understanding of the communication challenges faced by your clients and prospects will be an important factor in your marketing success. Capture what you consider to be the characteristics of your target audience, where they seek information on your type of solution and how they perceive your solutions in terms of urgency and importance. Competitive landscape. The best way to gain a marketing advantage is to know who you're up against and how they operate within the market. Analyze your primary competitors in terms of how and when they distribute their strategic alliances, their key accounts, their market share or sales volume, their industry product or account focus. What's their value proposition? How do they answer the question, why buy from us? Value proposition. The best way to strengthen your brand is to equip everyone within your organization to confidently answer the following two questions. What business are you in? Why should I buy from you? Here's an easy way to script your value prop. If you need to establish, update, or refine your value proposition, take the time to identify what makes your company different. For example, financial strength, alliances, service, industry expertise, intellectual property, or support. Articulate your company's value proposition in terms of the audience you serve and what the audience members need in terms of their key buying motivation, such as needing to improve collaboration or communication or to retain vital employees. Identify your market categories, such as we are the leading communication suppliers to pharmaceuticals in XYZ region, or we're a full-size communications company. Be prepared to answer succinctly what you offer and why customers should purchase from you. In its simplest terms, a value proposition is a positioning statement that explains what benefit you provide for who and how you do it uniquely well. It describes your target buyer, the pain point you solve, and why you're distinctly better than the alternatives. A good example of this would be Lyft, Ride in Minutes. 
For people who need a friendly, affordable ride, our company is an on-demand transportation service that provides convenient local service. Unlike taxis, we offer immediate pickup and an easy way to pay. Product and sales. When planning, consider producing a chart with your major product announcements, the launches, by product offering and quarter. Sales enablement tools. Sales enablement tools are tools to boost your business, increase sales, and drive business growth. If we dig deeper, the following are elements that are part of the sales enablement tools. Content for lead generation. We have blog posts, white papers, and eBooks, even case studies. Constantly remind your sales team that they're readily available for them to use. Content for internal sales support group. Sales scripts. There's nothing worse than a salesperson who reads a script line by line to a prospect. On the other hand, you want your sales team to hit the right points of the conversation during the sales call. Create a sales script that is more like talking points. It gives reps the information they need and it doesn't require them to memorize lines like an actor. Product sheets. This is another asset that's useful for both the sales rep and the prospect. This piece of content should answer at least some of the following questions. Who's the product for? What does it do? How does it help? How much does it cost? Having a sheet like this readily available that lists the brand's core and obscure products and services is essential for any initial meeting with a prospect. Competitor comparisons. Sales reps should be aware of what the competition is offering and how their brand differentiates itself. It's important to understand why your company is the best. Summarize this information in an easy to view format and your sales team will increase its odds during competitive situations. Here's a few pieces of content that should be delivered, not by marketing, but by the sales team itself. Email templates. Apart from the company newsletter, a marketing department will want to equip its sales team with templates for a number of different occasions. They should be follow-up emails, outreach emails, check-in emails. Ideally, there should be a canned email for every type of customer or prospect interaction. One-pagers. This form of sales collateral is fast and it's an easy way for prospects to view what services the brand provides and whether or not the brand's product can solve their pain point. Presentations. Customer slide decks should always be a joint production between sales and marketing. When marketing does it all, the content can miss the mark in terms of what actually drives a sale to close. When sales does it all, the deck often lacks clarity and consistency. While marketing should take the lead in generating this content, they must do so with heavy input from sales. It's definitely a joint effort. Social messages. Although social media isn't immediately thought of as a sales tool, it's important for sales rep to interact with prospects via social media. So be sure to provide them with some suggested tweaks and LinkedIn messages. Ultimately, the content produced by your marketing department must serve the business in some way. The best way to make sure this happens is by focusing more of your energy creating content geared towards the sales department. Price. What you charge for your products and services impacts both sales and profitability. In reviewing your current product strategy, examine your objectives as well as the external factors that impact your customers' willingness to pay. Promos and offers. Based on your marketing objectives for the year, determine your mix of promotional tactics. Take a life cycle view of customers and prospects. Tactics will vary when you promote to someone who is a prospect or if they're just learning about your organization. 
or gathering information on alternatives or in a transaction with you. Consider the attention existing customers require as well. Offers. What will capture your customer's interest, provide value, or spark a conversation? To advance a sale, it is often important to have an offer that represents a next step or reason to engage, or in the case of a customer, a way to build loyalty. As you build your, mar your marketing program, determine what you need at each stage in the customer life cycle. The marketing budget. The marketing budget of the future. At the end of the day, adjusting your marketing budget comes down to improving the customer experience. When customers are treated to exceptional service, they're more likely to return and share their experience with others. These referrals bring more customers into your store and will turn into higher customer lifetime value and increase purchase frequency. The next slide will give you a better idea of how it should look. Remember, it all ties to leads. Here's a marketing budget template for your consideration. Notice the categories of demand generation, brand awareness, and sales enablement. These categories are then showed by quarter. The demand generation section also shows lead generation by quarter. For a marketing plan, you will want to determine how you will spend in each category. The integrated marketing calendar. Now that you know your objectives and you have assessed the competitive climate and have your value proposition established, it's time to put your plan into action. I recommend creating a detailed schedule of tasks for specific marketing tactics. Where possible, assign an individual or group to be responsible for each task. Analytics. No marketing plan, event, or campaign can be really successful if you don't monitor and evaluate it. This sometimes is a forgotten part of the plan. How can you determine the outcome of a plan if it's not measured? As marketers, it's essential to monitor the heartbeat of a marketing plan as this determines essential performance factors such as the ROI, engagement, goals attained, marketing expense against revenue, and lead generation, to name a few. As an example, measure the number of leads generated by a tactic and the number of leads that convert to sales. For customer loyalty programs, match targets for retention and the lifetime value of a customer as a guide for setting a budget and evaluating the results. Review your results based on your objectives and set targets per promotional tactic. Compare the results to how your marketing tactics have performed in the past so that you have a baseline to refine your budget and tactical mix for your next marketing plan. You're an integral part of how your company approaches the marketplace and a crucial representative of your products and services. Completing an annual marketing plan helps keep your sales pipeline filled and your existing customers loyal. The time and effort required to set priorities, review your competitive position, and create a calendar of marketing activities will help you allocate resources to meet your business goals. That's all, folks.